I've been on Poshmark now for almost two years, and while the title is a little misleading because I don't have sales every single day, and here's the secret, nobody has sales every single day. Even the biggest sellers have occasional zero dollar sales days, but even though I'm not making like consistent daily sales every single day of the year, I am having much more consistency in my sales than I ever have before. So as I approach my second year anniversary of selling on Poshmark, I thought I'd share whatever tips I could with you as far as how I am having consistency in my Poshmark sales. So if you are interested in learning more about that, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body candles by your neck All Hey everyone, my name is Becky Park and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark and on eBay as well. I also dabble in Mercari, but Mercari has not been good to me, so I have kind of left it alone for the time being. I am a full-time teacher when I am not selling on Poshmark and that is why right now I am filming from my classroom because I'm in the middle of like we just had a half day of school and we're about to have some professional development and during that like lunch period time I thought I would make this video and provide some professional development for all of you and this is kind of part two in a series that I have on how to be a reseller and my first video in case you missed it is right here I will link it and it is how to sell bread and butter brands that you know brands like Talbot and American Eagle and J Crew. how to sell those brands for pretty good money so if you're interested in that you can check it out right here and I have had such a great positive response to that video so thank you so much and today we're gonna to be talking about what you can do to have more consistency in your sales perhaps even to have more daily sales and by the way there is this like crazy heater situation I don't know it blows out air as loudly as possible so we're gonna to have to contend with that so excuse all that crazy noise so if you're interested in watching videos like this and just learning how you can take your reselling business more seriously, make sure that you hit the like button so that I know that you are enjoying these kinds of videos filled with tips. And then also make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos that I may put out within this series. So my first tip that I have for you is to be consistent. To be consistent in a lot of different things. I think number one, the most consistent thing, if you want daily sales, is to list consistently. I feel kind of like a hypocrite saying that because these last few days I really haven't been super consistent and that's because I've been really busy at school but when I'm able to I list consistently and what that means is trying to list anywhere from five to ten items a day but if all you can muster up is one listing a day that's okay too. Poshmark really does favor sellers who are putting new items in their closet on a daily basis. Or, you know, even if you're consistent in terms of like you're listing stuff every two to three days or something like that. But I feel like Poshmark doesn't take you very seriously as a seller if you list a bunch of things one day and then you don't list anymore for like a whole month. They want to see that you're going to take their platform seriously and continue to be on their platform and list on their platform. Poshmark is a very social reselling platform and just like with Instagram or with Facebook, there is an algorithm that really favors those who are active on that app or on that platform pretty regularly. So those who are on the app sharing, listing, doing all those kinds of things, those are the people who do seem to reap more reward and benefit from said platform. Now some things to help you be consistent with listing is try to always have a bunch of pictures on your phone of things that could be listed at any given moment. So if you batch work your photography and you have a day where you sit down for like an hour and you just take pictures of all the stuff that you have ready to list, then you can space out when you list those things throughout the week or until the next time that you're able to take more pictures. Something that I wish I would be better about but is also a tip for you is you can also create drafts on Poshmark. I believe that as of right now you can only have up to like 15 drafts but even if you have an excess of time in one day and you could maybe create 15 drafts so that you just have them on standby for days when you don't really have time to create listings then you can go into those drafts and just kind of make those listings live as you need to when you don't have the time to sit there and actually create a listing yourself. So those are some tips as to how you can be consistent with your listing. The second part of being consistent that I want to share with you is be consistent with sharing your closet. That's probably, 
either tied for first with listing new items or it's a very close second. Sharing your items is what gets your particular items at the top of their field for whatever it is that people are searching. So if you have an American Eagle pair of jeans on sale, so do like hundreds if not thousands of other people. So the way that your American Eagle pair of jeans is going to stand out compared to somebody else's is when I go into Poshmark and search American Eagle jeans, if I just recently shared it, then my listing is going to be at the very top when that search goes through. So you want to make sure that you are sharing your closet at least once a day every single day. And you wanna just build this into your routine. I personally try to share my closet every morning. I have like a free period at school or I'll do it during my lunch. That's when I share my closet. And then I also have a student who shares for me every evening. I pay her to share my closet every day. So I know that if I can't get around to it because it's just way too busy at school, I know that my closet will get shared at least once. Out of everything that I'm gonna share in this video, I feel like being consistent with your sharing and with your listing, those are honestly the two most important things I believe when it comes to making daily consistent sales on Poshmark like a very low third place I would say within that idea of consistency is you can also relist items that are kind of stale in your closet they've been sitting around in your closet for maybe a month or two and no one has purchased the item yet then you could go ahead and just relist the item which means that you're going to delete the original listing and create a brand new listing for the same item. And what that does is it makes Poshmark think that you've created a brand new listing, because you have, and you'll have fresh eyes on the listing. People who maybe have joined Poshmark since you created that listing the first time, there is just some magical power behind relisting that will just help more people see those items and hopefully help you make a sale on an item that's been sitting around for quite some time. But the second tip that I want to share with with you as far as how you can make daily consistent sales on Poshmark is to utilize Poshmark's selling tools. And what I mean by that, I think are the big two. One is offers to likers and the other one is closet clear out. What it means to send offers to likers is that if anyone has liked an item that you have in your closet, you have the option of holding a private sale just for people who have liked items in your closet. And the way that you do that is you select your listing and at the bottom right hand corner, there is a button that says price drop. You press it and you have two options. One we're gonna talk about here in a little second, which is a public sale. And the other one is private sale or offers to likers. And so what you'll select is that private sale one. And what you have the option to do is to send a specific private offer just to the people who have liked your item. So the only people who are going to see the sale price are the people who have liked your item. This price is not going to go out to everyone else to see, but it's just going to go out to people who have liked your item. So it's going to target those specific people. You have to drop the price by at least 10% and you do have to attach an additional shipping discount to that that you have to pay out of pocket. So for example, if your item is listed for $20, you have to drop the price to at least $18 and you have to attach a shipping discount of at least $1.80. You also have the option to offer them free shipping, in which case you would eat the entire shipping cost and they would not have to pay for shipping. I generally don't use that because I don't have a lot of items in my closet that are worth a lot of money, like over $50. And the only time that I really offer free shipping is on items that are like 40, 50, 60 dollars because otherwise it eats into my profit a little too much. I personally really enjoy sending out offers to likers every evening and then what happens sometimes is I will wake up and I will wake up to people having accepted those offers and I feel like I made money in my sleep which we all know I didn't because I had to like put in a lot of work when I wasn't sleeping. But the fact is the sale was made while I was asleep and I woke up to a nice little notification saying that somebody accepted my offer and now I made that sale. The second Poshmark feature that is very similar to offers to likers is closet clear out. Now offers to likers is something that you can do whenever you want. 
Poshmark does hold events called make a deal days where they have like special incentives for you to send out offers to likers. You can win like $100 Poshmark credit or things like that on those days if you happen to send out offers to likers. But the truth is you can send out offers to likers whenever you want. Like I said, I like to do it on a daily basis. Some people like to do it on a weekly or bi-monthly basis. Some people really just don't do it unless their sales are super slow. But I like to just do it on whatever items, receive likes that day in the evening. Closet clear out, however, is not something that you can do whenever you want. It is a day that Poshmark designates as closet clear out. And typically, Poshmark has been holding closet clear outs like at least once or twice a week. And you can find out that it's a closet clear out day by in your news feed, there's like a banner across the top. And if it's a closet clear out day, it will say it right there. Closet clear out is a little bit different from offers to likers because you're not just extending your sale to the people who have liked your item, but you are extending a sale price to everybody. So you're actually physically dropping the price of your item. But in turn, what happens is when you drop the price of your item, again, by at least 10%, then Poshmark will notify those who have liked your item. So in that way, it's kind of similar to offers to likers, but they will notify people who have liked your item that you've dropped the price and then Poshmark will offer discounted shipping of $1.80 to those potential buyers. So they're still receiving discounted shipping, but it's not at your cost. You're not the one paying for it. Poshmark is. Now, the frustrating thing about closet clear out is that a lot of people will just drop the price on certain items every time closet clear out rolls around, but no one ends up purchasing the item for that drop price. So they need to either remember to go back and raise the price again, or they're just left with this like lower price on their item. And then for the next closet clear out, maybe they drop it again. So the price just keeps getting lower and lower until it's at a price that they're really not comfortable with. So again, Poshmark is a lot like Instagram and it's a lot like Facebook and it's a lot even like YouTube kind of where if you are utilizing their features, they're going to kind of push you up on the algorithm. So for those of you who are on Instagram, if you are utilizing things like their stories and if you're utilizing even like the different tools that they've provided within their stories, then your stories kind of get pushed out more than those who are not using all of the fun little tools like, you know, the questions or the like, what is that where you vote like how excited you are about something or whatever you know all that kind of stuff people who use the functions that Instagram has created they get pushed up and those who don't are just kind of like left in the background and if you want Poshmark to kind of push you up on the algorithm you have to kind of do the same thing you want to show them that you're going to utilize the features that they've created and they will reward you for that the next thing that I think is important when it comes to making daily consistent sales is to price competitively. Poshmark is kind of known for people marking their prices up quite a bit, and that is because Poshmark does take 20% of every transaction, and that's a lot. I mean, it's a lot, especially compared to, you know, Mercari or even eBay. So when I say that you need to price competitively, what I mean is you do need to make sure that you are checking comps, which are comparable sold listings, and you want to make sure that your items are not priced too high above those prices, especially because depending on what it is that you're selling, chances are other people are selling the same item or something very similar. And if your item is priced way too high compared to those other sellers, guess whose items they're probably going to buy first not yours. So if you want to make consistent daily sales, one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your pricing is competitive compared to the market. So what I do to figure out how I should price something is I look up that particular item. So let's say I am trying to sell a pair of Everlane jeans. I just sold a pair not too long ago, so I'll use that as an example. If I'm trying to sell a pair of men's Everlane jeans in the classic fit, I will put that information into the search bar as if I'm shopping for that item myself. And the first thing that will pop up is all of the Everlane men's jeans in a classic fit. And if I have like a specific size that I have listed as my size, it will show me the Everlane jeans in that size, in my particular size. So if they're not in my size, the ones that I'm trying to sell myself, then I will go in and I'll just usually hit like all for the size because I want to see what people are selling their Everlane jeans for regardless of what size they are. So I will select all so I can see all of the jeans that are presently listed and I will see what people are pricing them at. 
So that gives me an idea of what's on the market right now. But then what I think is really important is to go into availability, that's another filter, and I select sold, because I want to see, so now that I've seen what people are selling them for right now, what have they sold for previously, and how recent are these sales? So I'll go into recently sold, and I will see what prices people have been moving these kinds of jeans for. And that gives me an idea too of, Okay, everyone is pricing their Everlane jeans at $100, let's say, but they're really not selling for more than, let's say, $50. So then I am going to be the smart one and maybe list my jeans at $60 because even though that's a lot less than what everyone else is selling their jeans for at the moment, I'm not like bringing the market price down because I just checked what the market says and the market says these jeans are only going to sell for $50. I'm still going to price my jeans competitively and I'm still going to get the same amount that other people are selling them for and leave a little bit of room for negotiating you know, on price and whatnot. But my $60 price tag looks a lot better than everyone else's $100 price tag. So the chance that someone is going to choose my listing to buy over someone else's is much higher. On the flip side, this is kind of weird, but not only is pricing your items too high kind of an issue, but so is pricing them too low. If you have a pair of Everlane jeans and you price them at like $15, someone might assume that there's something wrong with them because a lot of times the only reason someone would put such a low price on an item like that is because they're heavily flawed. So again, it's just really important to check what other people have their items listed at as well as what they've recently been selling for. And I think that if you combine information from those two sources, you should be able to come up with a really good price for your own listing. So make sure that you are pricing your items competitively. The next tip I have for making daily consistent sales is make sure that you have really good pictures. There are a lot of people on Poshmark who are selling their items and they're not really taking the time to take good pictures. They're just throwing their clothes on the ground or on their bed or on their couch and they're taking the picture and sometimes the lighting is really bad so you can't even really see what it is that is being sold. And then right next to that is someone's much more professional looking picture and they've hung it up on the wall or they have a really nice looking flower lay and as a buyer I'm gonna go with the more attractive looking picture even if it looks like it's gonna cost maybe a little bit more because it looks like this item is gonna be clean well cared for versus an item that's on the ground or on someone's laundry machine or I mean there, I've seen all kinds of pictures it's kind of crazy what's up on Poshmark this doesn't mean that you need to invest a lot of money or even you know Oh my gosh, I just realized that my drink is right here. Sorry, this is, I'm talking about like nice pictures and this is not like the most beautiful presentation. It's what I have to work with though. Anyway, it doesn't mean that you need to go out there and spend all this money on like a white fluffy rug or on a lighting kit or all these different things. Really, all I do is I use natural lighting, I have a blank wall, and I have a small command hook and a nice wooden hanger that I put the garment on and I hang it on the command hook. That's it. And then I use a lot of apps to edit the pictures afterwards. And I will share that link right here. And I know it's helped a lot of people just learn how to brighten up their pictures and make their pictures look a lot better. That's all I use though. I don't spend a lot of money on you know fancy props for flat lays or on lighting or anything like that. I just use my phone and my wall. But you want to make sure that your pictures stand out, that they're clean, and that people can see exactly what it is that you are selling. Especially if there are any flaws, you want to make sure that you just close those and take pictures of those in your listing. The next thing that I think helps Poshmark favor you in the algorithm is to ship your items quickly. If Poshmark is constantly having to remind you to ship something out, then chances are they're not going to reward you by like throwing more sales your way. Now, I don't know if this is like actual truth, but I have heard a lot of people say that you do move up in Poshmark's algorithm if you are known to be a fast shipper. I, I don't know if that's true. I just thought I would throw that in here though because that's what I've heard. 
Nevertheless, regardless of if it helps you within Poshmark's algorithm or not, it does help make for a happy customer, a satisfied customer, and a satisfied customer hopefully turns into a repeat customer. And honestly, nine times out of 10, when I get love notes from Poshmark buyers, something that is mentioned in that love note is how quickly I was able to ship out the item. So as, a, as quickly as you are able, I would say get those items shipped out. You wanna make sure that you are making your buyer happy. And then the last thing that I will share with you is to use the bundle feature of Poshmark. I use this bundle feature so much for so many different things and I really think that this is what helps me make a lot more sales than the average person who just kind of lists their items and waits for the sales to roll in. I do think, again, because Poshmark is such a social reselling platform, Poshmark does favor you if you are being social on the platform and the bundling feature is what allows you to socialize with other people on the platform. So one way that I use the bundling feature is if I notice that the same potential buyer has liked two or more items, I will bundle those items together for that person and I will leave a message in the bundle saying something along the lines of, hey, I saw that you liked a couple items in my closet, so I wanted to go ahead and send you an offer on both of those items with discounted shipping. Let me know if you have any questions. Poshmark has come out with a statement saying that those who correspond directly with potential buyers make a greater percentage of sales than those who don't. And what that means is if you actually reach out to your potential buyer, whether it's you leaving a comment on their About Me page, whether it's you leaving a comment within you know, your actual listing, or whether it's what I'm talking about right now, which is creating a bundle, and then within that bundling feature, having a conversation with them, Poshmark says that the potential buyer is more likely to buy if you actually converse with them. And I can like attest to that 100%. The first thing that I bought on Poshmark, it was because I liked two items from someone's closet and then probably within like a couple hours of me liking those items, the buyer came in. And this is before like bundling was a thing. You couldn't like create your own bundle for someone else or something. But she came to my About Me page and she said, hey, I saw that you like that purse and I don't remember what the other item was, but let's say it was like a sweater or something, but she said, I saw that you like the purse and the sweater. I can let go of those items for this price. And I was like, okay, look, that sounds fair. I will do that. And that was my first purchase on Poshmark. So there is just that human connection of like reaching out to someone and starting that conversation that will help you make a sale much more than if you never reached out to that potential buyer in the first place. Does it work every time? No, obviously not, but it does have a higher percentage of success than if you don't reach out to the buyer at all. I will also use the bundle feature if I am running a sale in my Poshmark closet. So if someone likes an item, I will create a bundle for that person and in the comment section, I will let them know that I'm having a sale in case they didn't know. And a lot of times people will find your listing either through Google search or you know just by searching in the Poshmark app. They're not necessarily looking at your closet as a whole, they just see that one listing. So even if you have created a listing for a sale that you're running in your closet, chances are they may not have seen it. So if I'm running, let's say like a 25% off my entire closet sale, if someone likes an item, I will take the time to put that item in a bundle and write out a little blurb about my sale and let them know. And again, more often than not, that's gonna lead to a sale because if they didn't know I was running a sale in the first place, now they have even greater incentive to make that purchase or to even add stuff to the bundle and get a really good deal. Another thing you can do within that bundle feature is if you notice that someone has liked two pairs of, let's say, Levi's jeans in the same size, but you know that you have a third pair, you could use the bundle feature and send that third pair to them and be like, hey, I saw that you were shopping for some Levi's. I have another pair. I don't know if you saw them. I'll go ahead and add them in this bundle for you, and I can offer you this great price on all three. It's kind of the same thing as like going to an actual retail store at the mall. And a lot of those employees are trained to do add-ons, right? So they see you going into the fitting room with like jeans and a nice little sweater. So they're gonna go around while you're trying stuff on and find other things to go with that outfit. So maybe they'll go pick out a scarf and then some boots and they'll bring them to you and be like, hey, I saw that you were putting together this really cute fall outfit. I just thought that these two items would finish the look. 
Is that buyer in the fitting room going to buy those two items every time? No, but chances are they might. And at least now they have the possibility of doing it because they've seen the items. They see how good it looks together. So you're just being a really good salesperson by like, Hey, what about this one too? <laughs> so that's another thing that you can use the bundle feature for. Finally, I think that the bundle feature is great because it's a good space in which you can start to discuss price with someone. A lot of times people will leave comments within your listing and say things like, how low are you willing to go? And if you say on a $50 item, well, I can go as low as 30, then now that's there for the world to see. And if someone wants to buy your item later because that original person didn't, they'll know, oh, she's willing to go as low as 30 and you're just kind of stuck with that price. Whereas if somebody says, hey, how low are you willing to go on this item? Rather than answering them within the comment section of your listing, you can create a bundle, send that item to the bundle, and have a private conversation with that potential buyer in that bundle feature. That's why I love the bundle feature so much is because it's kind of the only way where you're able to have a private conversation with that one person about the item in question. eBay has a great way where you can just kind of like go back and forth about one item. Even Mercari, you can have a conversation about one item. I don't know why Poshmark hasn't really figured this out, but this is kind of like the back end way in which you can have a private conversation about one item. These are the things that I've been doing for the last two years. And like I said, I have been experiencing a lot of success. And nowadays having $0 sales days are pretty rare. I still usually get maybe one a week, but there are a lot of weeks when I make at least one sale every day. And I do credit that to the fact that I've been doing a lot of the things that I just shared with you in this video. I'm sure that many of you have some tips as to how you make daily consistent sales on Poshmark. And if you don't mind leaving them down in the comment section below so that we can all learn from one another, and so that I can learn from you, I'd really appreciate that because I love this YouTube community and how much we're able to grow and learn from one another. So if you don't mind leaving your tips down below too, that would be amazing. Like I said, if you enjoyed this video and if you're enjoying this series on just how to be a reseller and do some of these things, then please make sure that you hit the like button. You can also hit the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much. I hope you are having amazing sales and I will see you in the next one. Bye!